Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel, decontaminating your car. Another area of detailing which can sound very glamorous but very scary when you're new to detailing. It's nothing scary. Certain forms of dirt get stuck on your paintwork which do not come off when you wash the car with detergent and water and a wash mitt and a hog's hair brush. Now if you look at this lump of clay, if the camera sorts its focus out, there we go. You can see a brownness to lots of this, so it's, there's an element, element of tar and, you know, um, what's the word, petrochemicals or whatever, tar, basically, and bits of bitumen um, that have got stuck on the side. There's also a darkness to it, which is small amounts of fallout, you know, um, brake dust that gets embedded in the, the paintwork and sap. Um, what else? Bug splatter is, is another contamination that you can't always wash off. Um, you know, cement dust. What else? Uh, <laughs> the list can go on and on. Glue, adhesives, paint, uh, overspray. That's a really important one and a common one that you can find on your car. So literally, you use this clay. And what is clay? Well, it's a butyl, a flexible butyl putty that you'll... You'll have seen various forms of putty like this that are made of butyl. And in with the butyl is mixed abrasives. If you have an aggressive clay, they'll use bigger clumps of abrasive with bigger micron particle sizes or whatever they are, um, that are more aggressive, that will scratch more and mar more. Mar's the word that the industry likes to use. Um, through to finer clays that use finer abrasives that will are less aggressive and will look, remove less contamination but will scratch the car less. So there's a quick, uh, you know, summary of what contamination is and what claying does. It just strips off all this stuff that washing leaves behind. Now, here's the interesting stuff. So I think Built Hamber, you know, a big fan of the Built Hamber brand, have some of the best decontamination products on the market. Now let's start with clay. So clay is obviously the thing that's doing all the work. Built Hamber have three clays. The white mild clay, the black medium clay, I think it's medium. One's medium, one's regular. Black is the middle one. And the blue, which is the very aggressive one, I think that's regular. They're 9.99 for 200 mil, so they're very cheap. They're stiff clay bars, not as malleable. The white one's a little bit more malleable. The important thing with built hamber clay is it removes more contamination, I believe, than other clay bars. I've never done a side-by-side -side test, but, you know, best of clays. But when I'm stripping contamination off a car and I grab another fine clay, I, I sort of, I'm going over the paintwork looking to pull off the little lumps and for the paintwork to come smoother. It's a longer process that requires more passes with other clays than the built hamber clays, in my opinion. Let me know what you think. Uh, it's also the price. It's about half the price of all the other clays. So that's why I use this clay. That's why I recommend it. I'm just going to pause the video. Okay, I'm back. Family just came back loaded with Burger King for the kids and everyone else didn't buy me any. Disgraceful. <laughs> Come back to the garage in, in defeat with a San Pellegrino instead. Now, I was talking about claying. I think I got to the clay itself and I was talking about Built Hamber and why I use it. The price is a big thing, but the clay I find strips off more contamination than other clay bars. Don't believe me? If you have a test panel at home, get some a can of rattle paint, red rattle paint, put some overspray on it. Um, and overspray is one of the toughest contaminations to remove. Test clay bars against overspray. And you will notice a difference, and it's the amount of passes you have to do with built hamber clay to get that overspray off compared to other clays. Obviously, overspray is, if a car's covered in overspray, get the built hamber blue clay, because that makes a big difference. If it's heavily contaminated, you could use the black clay. For all other cars, use the light white clay, because that's sufficient and it will put in less marring. 99% of the times, the white clay is the one to go for. Yes, built hamber clays are stiffer than other clays, so they can be really t tough to get, you know, get them working. But once you start putting heat into them and rubbing them, they get some energy through them. They start to soften up and then they become ideal. Um, built hamber clays last a couple of years in the garage. 
if you buy loads of them and you don't use them after two or three years, they can become a bit cake-like and they lose a bit of their elasticity. So use them within a couple of years would be my advice. Now, before you clay, chemical decontamination. Now, after you've washed the car and you've got all the dirt off of the car, I think it's a good idea to go around all of the panels and spray this product, which is a fallout remover called Built Amber Corosol. Uh, spray it onto the panels of the car, just the misting over the panels, and have a clean wash mitt, and then work that misting that you put over the panel, just work it with the mitt so that you know you've covered each panel with um, fallout remover. You don't have to use a lot as long as you've covered it. The tri trick to avoid is spraying tons on there and having it all running off down the side of the car. Um, you know, that, that's one trick to avoid because you're going to waste a lot of product. You also want to avoid spraying it into the runoff areas if you can. That's why a little misting on each panel and spreading it is good. If you get loads of it in the runoff areas inside the door jams, boot jams, and you don't rinse that all off, it stinks and you can smell it in the cockpit and that's a mistake to avoid you don't want your car to smell of fallout remover that's happened to me it's a mistake i've made now the key thing to understand about fallout remover is this stuff reacts and goes purple reacts with the rust and dissolves the rust not the iron by dissolving the rust you shrink the embedded iron fallout and it makes it easier to dislodge but you still need contact to dislodge it so do not fall into the trap of thinking that when this goes red and bleeds it's dissolving the iron so that's it you can just let it dissolve and then it's done it's not it's just shrinking off the rust layer and leaving the, embed the embedded iron a lot looser so it's easier to remove through contact so it's good as well after you've laid it out with the wash mitt to allow this to dwell on the panel for up to five minutes so that it can do its thing and the reaction can occur and the rust layer can shrink and if it's a warm day like it was today although it's early in the morning and not hot, we're in spring in the UK, so probably only about 14 degrees, something like that. You can just keep circling around the car and making contact with the film of uh, fallout remover. And that contact, again, is gonna help dislodge any loose fallout. Once it's been on the car for five minutes, rinse it off of the car. And this is your final rinse as part of your wash process as well. When you rinse, pop up the bonnet, pop up the boot, and rinse all of it out of those runoff areas as well, like I said, so you don't get any smell. Pop up the engine bay, rinse it off everywhere, okay? Then you bring the car in and dry the car off. That's what I do. And when the car is dry, you can then use the built hamber cleanser fluid or a tar and glue remover of your choice, whatever. But they generally have to be used dry because they're not water miscible. They're hydrocarbons, so they're the opposite of water. Dry the car off, and then panel by panel, you can spray, you can spray a bit onto the panel if you like, you can spray a bit into a primed microfiber applicator that's clean, and just spread a film of the cleanser fluid over the panel, and that film sits there and it's gonna dissolve any tar that's on there. You do not want it to just leave it and let it flash off. You wanna let it sit there, and then before it evaporates, you wanna buff it so that it's had the maximum amount of time to dissolve the film of tar that's on the car. It's an optional step. Um, if you just test behind the front wheel and do a bit of claying, and there's lots of brown stuff on your clay, then you've got a good amount of tar on there, and it's gonna be definitely worth doing this step. Um, you only do steps if it's worth it, and I think it is worth it. The more contamination you've got on the car, the better you are using a tar and glue remover, or a, you know, yeah, tar and glue remover before you clay. It will just make things a bit easier. Now, sh some people say you should use a tar and glue remover before you use a fallout remover. The only problem with that is you've got to dry your car off to use the tar and glue. And then after you've gone around and used the tar and glue, panel by panel if you like, wipe it off, spray on, work it, wipe it off, go again if there's any little stubborn spots of tar. When you've gone around again, You've then got to use the Corosol, and this is, a, this is a spray and rinse type product, isn't it? Spray, agitate, rinse. And you've got the car wet again, so it's not the most efficient way. Um, and it doesn't really matter, because you're whichever way around you do it, these chemicals are going to help remove contamination, but you're going to be then going in with your clay bar and then bashing the hell out of your paintwork, <laughs> dragging what's left off of the paint. So it doesn't matter in my 
opinion, do it whichever way you like. That's the way I do it because it saves me time and the net results are exactly the same. Now, um, then, so after you've done your chemical decontamination, you're ready to do your claim. I like to use optimum no rinse, watered down at its clay lube recommendation or even a little bit weaker. Do not ask me what the O&R dilution ratios are. Why? Because you can Google that yourself. <laughs> I get really funny about this. I get really cranky. Do not ask me questions. You can Google because I'm trying to answer lots of questions. And there's too many questions coming in that I can't answer. So I have to pick and choose the questions I answer. I know it all sounds very high and mighty, but it's just true. Um, so I hate answering questions that you could Google that I can't remember that I have to Google for you. So you're asking me a question. I'm Googling it and giving you the answer. And I'm too polite to say, go Google that yourself rant over um, after that get your clay work it out into a puck should probably put gloves on actually uh, you know the latex gloves nitrile gloves not latex these black nitrile gloves because they do actually seem to help I think stop the clay whizzing off I don't know why maybe not um, work panel by panel I started on the hood or the bonnet. You get upset. People get upset when I say hood. <laughs> Spray O and R over the bonnet or your target panel, and just gently um, clay over your car. Always clay up to the edges, around the edges. If you ever put fallout remover on after you've clayed, because that's the kind of lunatic I am, you can test where you've missed. It'll always be around the edges that you've missed. Other thing are the Areas that get the most contamination, generally, unless you park under a tree and it's all going to fall on your roof and your bonnet, generally are behind the wheels and the rear end, the, the exhaust end. <laughs> the wheels, all the brake discs, peppers the side of the car down there. You know where I mean. So you'll feel lots of roughness down there. You need to clay thoroughly down there. Sometimes you can start claying on a bonnet and think your car's going to be fine. And then you get down to the sides and you realise that that's where all the clay is. Uh, where all the contamination is. Fold your clay often. Use plenty of this O&R. Mist it on. Work panel by panel. Do a good job on each panel. And then when you're finished, I'll just collect up who I am at the moment. I'm just collecting up all of the O&R so I don't have big patches of dry product when I've finished. So that I then work my way around the car and I've my car is all decontaminated and there's no residues or anything on the car and it's ready to be taped up. And polished how long should you spend claying your car I've spent about an hour and a half which is rapid pretty rapid considering this was absolutely plastered in contamination you could spend longer I'm happy but when I go and feel around the car it's all nice and smooth um, so it'll be fine to polish spend as long as you want to spend if you're trying to polish your car wash and polish your car in one day then you're going to need to clay very quickly. John, what about clay mitts and clay cloths? Well, I've done comparisons. I'm a clay bar type of guy. Clay cloths can be save you time, but they the contamination that builds up in the clay cloth, you can't get it out of the surface. And over time, the clay cloth will inflict more and more marring on your car. Um, you know, to the point where... I don't know, I just prefer clay. <laughs> I just think it gets the contamination off better with less of that kind of orange, peely, wet sandy look thing. Right, that's everything on claying, apart from one other final rent. This car has been, a dealership has put a sealant on it, and I'm shocked by the, they have put a sealant over the top of all of this heavy contamination. Like, they, this car was peppered in um, tar and fallout, and um, what is the point of putting a thick sealant on top of all that contamination? Uh, you know, it it's goes against common sense, but it's just laziness. Because in low light, the car still looks relatively new and glossy. You know, someone's just washed it and thrown a sealant on it. Um, but just awful, awful thing to do. Makes my job of getting this car nice harder. And um, just why would you put a sealant on top of that much contamination? 
It's just, it's not difficult to clay a car. It's not difficult. It just takes a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of care. You do it properly, you get your paintwork cleansed, and then when you go and polish, you're polishing clean paint rather than polishing tar and fallout. Um, it's just the level of bodging that goes on. It's just unreal, because you can get away with it. Unless you know about all this car cleaning stuff, you know, unless you know about it, you're just going to look at a car in low light and think, yeah, it looks nice. Um, if you're buying a car, feel behind the front wheels. Feel, always feel down here. <laughs> and ask the dealer, say, does this come? Does this, I'd, I'd really like it, it'd be good if, if this, oh, this feels nice, has it got a sealant on it? And if they say yes, and it feels all rough behind the wheels, then they haven't clayed the car, they've just hurled it on. <laughs> Play dumb, because um, they're not going to tell you the truth. <laughs> um, so yeah, but behind the wheels is the place to check. That's like there. <laughs> That's where you'll know. And a lot of times it will feel rough and knobbly and you might even see some little black dots and all that sort of stuff. Obviously harder to see certain types of contamination on certain colours. What you want when you finish contaminating, decontaminating and claying your car is when you're claying, you can feel the little bumps. And as they come off, the paintwork starts to feel smooth. When you get there, you move on to the next bit. If in doubt, just clay a little bit longer, try and be thorough. And then when you go back and you dry off that panel and you finish that panel, you're feeling over it, it should all feel smooth. That's it, you just want it to feel smooth. And then you know there's no contamination. Um, so that's it for me. Three products, you need your clay bar, you need your fallout remover, you need your cleanser fluid, your tar and glue, you need a applicator for the cleanser fluid and you need some microfiber towels and you should use O&R as a clay lube. I'll li link them all in the description. Do not ask me about concentrations. <laughs> and good luck. What else? Have I missed anything? Have I missed anything? Don't skimp on the decontamination. Um, you know, if you don't wash the car properly, then everything goes wrong after that point. If you don't decontaminate the car properly, Everything goes wrong after that point. So you have to do each step properly as we've talked about before on the channel. So that's it on decontaminating your car with Built Hamber products, guys. All of the products that I use, the O&R, the Built Hamber stuff, I'll link it all in the description. You might be able to get 10% off with the code Forensics. Don't quote me if it doesn't work. It doesn't always work, sometimes it does. Um, that's it, any tips and tricks you've got on claying which are gonna be useful for other people, please put those in the comments because that helps get all of the good, good stuff out. There's some great tips out there. So that's it guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, I'll see you soon on the Forensics Detailing channel, bye for now. Holding on to what I the moment's gone Where was I when